Okay, time for a video on the subject everybody loves so much, asbestos. So let's get out the classic GP5 filter to talk about asbestos. Um, so yeah, there you go, GP5 filter. So, what I want to do in this video is try and clear up some concerns people have where they don't quite understand how asbestos is dangerous to you. So, basically, asbestos is like this fibrous material that's mined from rocks. Um, I've gone over this a few times. And... During the 20th century and before then, it was used in lots and lots of industries because it was quite fireproof and it was good for insulation. So asbestos was found to be a really good chemical, well not chemical, but a really good material, mineral, to um, put in everything to, you know, keep heat in things, stop things from burning. So it was used everywhere. And one of the uses for it was in gas mask filters, in the particulate filter. I need to stress that all NBC, CBRN, ABEX style filters contain charcoal. That is the bit that absorbs gas. Particle filters are what stops particles like dust from getting into your lungs, and that's where asbestos was used. So when somebody says, the GP5 filter contains charcoal, not asbestos, they're lying. Because it contains both charcoal and asbestos in the particulate filter. So, just to show you what the particle filter is if you're not familiar, and this is on really tight, this rubber pull plug. Can I get it off? without ripping my nails out. Maybe. No, I'm going to leave that off of a knife, so give me one second. Okay, so I actually had to leave that off of a knife, and you can see where I've scratched the paint off how much force I actually had to use here to get it off. So, in your typical GP5 filter, I imagine this filter, because the house height it was sealed, may still work, but again, not a good idea to breathe for it. You have your cotton layer at this end, which is what keeps the charcoal from going into your lungs, and in theory, asbestos if it leaks. In this section, you've got your charcoal, here it's shaking about a bit in there. Then in this bottom section you have the particle filter designed for trapping radioactive fallout and bacteriological weapons. So the asbestos was obviously used in the particle filter because it worked and it was cheap. Now there were alternatives to asbestos but the logic was for a lot of people making filters was that even if they knew asbestos was dangerous, asbestos is far less dangerous than in inhaling a biological weapon or fallout is sort of the thing of something in big quantities that might give you cancer in 40 years time as opposed to something that's going to kill you painfully immediately now. So that's basically what the purpose was for of asbestos in these filters. So let me reseal that up and I'll have to get the bottom cap where I find it because it flew off at high speed when I prized it off with a knife. So as I've gone over many times, asbestos was used because it was cheap and loads of it was about. Now. Why does asbestos damage your lungs? And this is the bit where people seem to get really confused. Asbestos is not poisonous. It's not like it's something that builds up in your system and then poisons you. What asbestos does is the fibres, and if you Google asbestos fibres, you'll see what they look like under microscopes and zoomed out. It's kind of like a cotton wool with lots and lots of barbs on it, is the easiest way of explaining it. And what will happen is the asbestos will be inhaled into your lungs and with most dust and other crap you inhale your body will eventually manage to breathe it back out you know it will clear up you'll cough it up as phlegm or whatever else asbestos will hook into your lungs and stick there so imagine inhaling microscopic barbed wire that's basically what asbestos does to your lungs so over time where it gets into your lungs it's tearing up the insides of your lungs more and more which will lower your lung capacity, lead to lots of other things like asthma and other breathing problems, and then eventually it can lead to asbestosis, which is quite a nasty thing, and then if I pronounce it right, mesophilinioma, no, I've definitely pronounced that wrong, but mesophilinioma, I'm never going to try and pronounce that word because I never get it right, but you'll know what I'm all about, the very aggressive lung cancer asbestos eventually leads to. So, one of the big problems I have is people go, yeah, but I know somebody who was exposed to asbestos and they didn't get cancer, therefore it's not dangerous. Asbestos is very much like smoking in regards to any amount of stuff like that, you know, that gets into your lungs, whether it be the tar, the carbon monoxide, all that sort of stuff, it's bad for you. The more that gets into your lungs, the worse it is. So again, if somebody smokes a cigarette every now and then, they're probably going to be fine. The cigarette smoke isn't going to do their lungs any good, but the very small amounts of it over a longer time aren't that bad. The reason asbestos is dangerous is lots of the people who have died from asbestos related diseases or have had asbestos related health problems have been people who did a 9 to 5 job working with asbestos where there were huge quantities of it in the air and nobody even thought about respiratory protection for them. 
So that was things like shipyard workers where they built ships using lots of asbestos as usual, people who worked in the factories where asbestos was put into products, people who worked in mines mining asbestos or rendering asbestos in machines, basically anywhere where there had been a massive amount of asbestos dust in the air. Now any dust is not going to do your lungs any good if you're exposed to large amounts of it for long periods of time, asbestos even more so. So, again, if you were doing your 9 to 5 job exposed to quantities of asbestos every day, large quantities, for many many years, those are the people who would die from asbestos related cancers and asbestos related things. But that's not to say asbestos is at all safe from limited exposure, it's not. As said, any amount will cause damage. Now, if you're very unlucky, a very small amount of asbestos could cause permanent damage to your lungs, which may increase your chances of getting lung cancer and things like that. So, the point is, when asbestos was originally in filters, it was safe, safe, in terms of it being trapped in the filter by the particulate layers and everything else, and it couldn't come out. And even if it did, the amount that you'd inhale would be, you know, far less dangerous than inhaling chemical, biological, nuclear, you know, weapons, that sort of stuff. I've gone over that many times, but I just want to stress that. People weren't retarded for putting asbestos in filters. Um, it was done simply because better to, uh, in the worst case scenario, get a long related problem 20 years plus down the line than die immediately a painful horrible death from your lungs dissolving from the inside from some sort of chemical weapon. So the reason asbestos was in there was straightforward but again the Soviets for example GP5 filters were using asbestos in the filters long since everybody else had stopped using asbestos in filters. Most other nations use fiberglass which again is not good if you inhale it but better than asbestos or other paper and, uh, paper and cotton sort of particulate layers. Asbestos was cheaper, and again, this isn't 100% pure asbestos particulate layer. The particle layer in a GP5 filter is only about, I think, 1-3% to asbestos. It varies a bit on the labs that have tested it, and it probably varies a lot from filter to filter because of Soviet quality control. But basically, it's like paper mache stuff, the particulate filter, where they mix lots of different materials together, asbestos being one of them, to make um, the layers. Now, World War II filters contain a much bigger asbestos layer, but, again, don't go breathing for old filters full stop. The point I am getting at, though, is asbestos, when it causes health issues, is generally long-term exposure. As I said, you worked with it 9 to 5 in your daily job for years on end. Um, but you should not expose yourself to any asbestos. So if you have two filters, and you have the option of using a filter on your mask, especially if it's just for fun and, you know, other stuff like that, don't use an asbestos filter. Now, again, although these are old filters and not, you know, guaranteed to work, if it came down to it and I had no other choice, I would go with an asbestos filter rather than inhale toxic, horrible stuff. Hell, I would even still use a GP5 filter if I knew I was going to be exposed to some sort of horrible particulate loose in the air and I knew this would protect me. It might sound weird, but again, I would rather take a very low risk of something happening to me 20 plus years down the line than having horrible things happen to me in the you know forefront of what's going on. But again, these filters are not safe in regards to they're getting old, bits could fall out of them. So hopefully that's cleared up a bit of what was going on. Now at some point I'll probably get one of my many GP5 filters and I may cut it up doing it as safely as I can and I will show you hopefully maybe if I can buy a cheap digital microscope or I can take photos with the microscope and put them in the video I will show you some of the stuff inside the filter, I'd really love to do that but it's doing it safely, that's the main concern because one of the issues I keep trying to explain to people like well I'm going to cut the filter up in my house if you disturb that asbestos and the asbestos gets loose you've contaminated your house of asbestos you're not only exposing yourself to it you're exposing other family members to it. So don't be a dickhead and cut the filter up in your house. Because, yeah, you might screw up your life, but you're going to screw up other people's lives as well. So, what it comes down to is, if you breathe through one of these filters now and again, you're probably not at any risk, or not a serious risk, but don't continue to do it. As I said, the people who mostly died and had asbestos related illnesses were people who worked with it day in day out and another thing is asbestos as said can often take years to actually start properly harming your lungs which is why I've heard other dumb people say well I, I was exposed to asbestos once and I'm fine now yeah the thing is it's generally 
the further down the line, the more and more the health issues become apparent from asbestos exposure as those fibres dig more and more into your lungs. That said, limited exposure should be fine, as long as it was very limited small amounts. That's not to encourage anybody to expose themselves to asbestos. If you do that on purpose, you are an idiot. However, I said not to panic anyone, because I know I've probably contradicted myself on that. But, again, I've not been able to pronounce mesphalonimioneuronia again properly. Um, but... The point is, don't panic if you've used these filters once or twice before, don't do it again, but understand that asbestos is an accumulative thing. The more you breathe in over longer periods of time, the more and more likely you are to have an asbestos-related illness or cancer. But still, don't breathe one through these filters on purpose unless you really had to. And again, there's plenty of modern, cheaper filters available than GP5 filters that will actually give you better levels of protection and far less likely to result in something horrible happening to you. So stay safe and don't use these filters unless you really have to.